The last Welsh states were conquered by Edward III in the 13th century, and it was split up between the King's heir, who was given the title the Prince of Wales, and March Lords. One of these in the late 14th century was Owen Glyndwr, who had land disputes with his English neighbour, Baron Grey de Ruthen. Owen had campaigned with Richard II in Scotland, but in 1399 Richard was ousted by Henry IV. King Henry faced a lot of opposition after this, notably many nobles unsuccessfully tried to oust him during the Epiphany Rising. But Baron Grey de Ruthen was a prominent ally of Henry, and he used his new position within the King's court to claim the disputed land back off Owen. Ruthen also prevented a royal summons from reaching Owen, meaning Owen did not provide troops for Henry's Scottish campaign, a treasonous act. Owen then either attacked Ruthen's land, or his land was just threatened to be taken from him. So, with a couple of followers, including the Tudors of Pedmanid, the ancestors of the Tudor dynasty, Owen rose up in 1400. Over the border, Henry lacked support from groups like the followers of the Lollard Heresy, who had been welcomed by King Richard. And Henry had taken his armies north to fight the Scottish, so Owen was able to quickly seize the northeast of Wales. In September 1400, King Henry returned from Scotland, but Welsh guerrillas harassed their supply lines, forcing him to retreat. So Henry then recruited help from his old ally, Henry Percy, the Lord of Northumberland, and his son, Harry Hotspur. But the Welsh rebels, in order to defend against this new upcoming invasion, tricked their way into Conway Castle in 1401. So as Owen's outnumbered forces won in the south at Minute Hygin, Hotspur could not take the rebel stronghold in Conway Castle. Hotspur therefore tried to make peace, but King Henry refused to acknowledge these peace attempts and invaded again in October. But this too failed because of the Welsh guerrilla tactics, and in 1402, Owen captured his old rival Ruthen in an ambush. Plus, at the Battle of Bringlass in June, he captured Edmund Mortimer, the descendant of Edward III, and uncle to King Richard II's old heir, who was also called Edmund Mortimer. King Henry refused to pay the ransom, so Edmund Mortimer agreed to join Owen. Plus, Edmund's sister was married to Harry Hotspur Percy. So the Percys, who were already angry with Henry for not being paid to defend the Scottish borders and losing military command in Wales, also joined Owen. These three leaders then signed the tripartite indenture, agreeing to divide the kingdom between themselves. And Henry IV also made the situation a lot worse for himself through a series of anti-Welsh legislations, like banning any English people from marrying a Welsh person. This encouraged many Welsh people to rise up and join Owen as he marched south to take Cardiff and Newport in 1403. Plus, the French and Bretons, eager to undermine the English, began sending men and weapons to help the Welsh rebellion. But despite this aid, they still failed to take Carnarfon Castle in the north, and at Shrewsbury in July 1403, Hotspur was killed in battle, ending the Percy's involvement. Nevertheless, Owen continued to take Aberystwyth in 1404, and held court at Harlech, where he was crowned the Prince of Wales. But the English forces, now under the King's son, Prince Henry, continued to advance. They fought back a Welsh attack on Grosmont Castle, killed Owen's son at Usk, and landed in Anglesey and recaptured Beaumaris. Even more French were sent to aid in the rebellion, but for some unknown reason after crossing the English border, they withdrew without fighting. The momentum was therefore lost, and the French didn't send any more troops due to increasing political tensions at home that would lead to the outbreak of the Armagnac Burgundian Civil War. So in 1406, Owen sent a letter to Charles VI, offering to create a National Church of Wales, and as part of the larger Western Schism, pledged allegiance to the Avignon Papacy as opposed to the Roman Papacy. But this failed to gain more French support, and Prince Henry changed tactics. Instead of risking further guerrilla attacks, he used the castles he still controlled to block off trade and supplies from Owen's supporters. So, as Owen was still campaigning and raiding, a lot of his supporters surrendered, allowing Henry to besiege Aberystwyth and Harlech in 1408. Many leaders like Edmund Mortimer died during these sieges, and in 1410, a last raid into Shropshire saw many other leaders caught and later executed. Owen therefore had lost most of his lands and supporters, and was reduced to conducting raids while in hiding. He was last seen in 1412 when he caught and ransomed a prominent Welsh supporter of King Henry, but Owen was not betrayed or came forward, so his fate remains a mystery. Then, in 1413, Prince Henry inherited his father's throne, becoming Henry V and unlike his father, he was willing to offer royal pardons as he prepared to go to war with France. But the anti-Welsh laws remained in place until the Tudor period, and the country was left in ruins and many Welsh landowning families had been wiped out. 